because I will talk to people that, that have given me the opportunity and coached me and, and hired me. I will say, thanks. I have no idea where me and Marty would be in our lives without you. And James always hits me with that. You'd be right where you're at. Yeah. It's, it's what you was meant to do. It, it would have been a different way that you got there, but you know, there's, yeah. there's a lot of hidden truths that are all true at the same time and still contradictions. Welcome to the Chalk Hard Podcast. Yes. We are live yes. in South Carolina. Sweet. New York. Although I feel kind of racist. Memphis, here we come. Or is that North Carolina? I think it's North Carolina. Where but anyway, welcome from? to the show, guys. Welcome to the Talk Hard Podcast. I'm Marty Norman. I'm still Brian Gordon. That's Brian Gordon All over day, there. And day. we have a special, amazing, one of the gurus of social media and marketing in this and all the platforms that ever existed including snatch chat um check out mr brian kendrick yes. <laughs> i have it but well, before we dive into this like part two by gonna the way part two. This, we're gonna dive in this is part two we, we're still going why so i don't wear the same if you want to, yeah if you want <laughs> if you want to see part one go back to last week yeah. part one we talked about some some uh what did we talk about it was so long ago it was a week ago no kidding right i don't know I can't we're trying to live in the future <laughs> yes <laughs> stay in a moment stay in a moment all right go ahead so i like i want to dive into manifestation and, and part of me feels like however you got on this journey yes. for training like the dogs show? Oh. was somewhere in your subconscious. Absolutely. This is something that you have thought about for a very long time, even if you're not aware of thinking about oh, it. I think he's aware of it. I can uh, remember. Remember I've, Brittany? Yep. I've got a story for you. Please do. <laughs> if you want to hear, but yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. take you deep into my subconscious. We're going to have to go back before we can go forward. Okay. All right. Let's do So the whole <laughs> point. Woo, guys, my subconscious. You want to talk about step to the unknown? Yes. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Just dive so, right in. So when I was a little boy. <laughs> Yeah, oh, every no. Christmas, every Christmas, I would ask for one thing and one thing only. A cat. A puppy. Oh. oh, oh. A puppy. And every year, I would get hand-me-down jeans, jackets that didn't fit. But for some reason, I can remember as a kid still being hopeful, laying there and hoping and thinking. Mm -hmm. I can remember twice in my childhood where I actually got a dog. Hold on, though. Hold oh, on. Oh, time oh. out. Time out. Time Damn. out. Time out. Damn, time I, out. I had so, really good momentum. No, because listen, listen. You got hand-me-down jeans. The only thing you had was an older sister. Mm, they yeah. still fit a little tight. <laughs> no, but listen. No, I got one word for you. Hashtag yard sales. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So if you guys don't know about Brian in this childhood, um, you can check that out. It, on one of the podcasts, I don't remember which. My dad is just always on a real tight budget, had a real hard time That's buying, a nice way. buying. Yes, and he always, if he got something, it would be because it was on sale. And if it happened to be during Christmas time, it was your Christmas present. And it just, it Christmas wasn't a pleasant time of year. There was twice in my life where I remember getting a dog. And I could tell you that I remember one, my, my father has a temper. And he liked the idea. That's a of, nice way of putting he, it. he liked the idea of dogs, but the responsibility having one would cause him to lose his. Okay. And I don't know this for fact, but I believe that the first one was kicked to death. The second one, Ozzy. I remember his name. I named him after Ozzy. Awesome. I was like twelve awesome. years old. Uh -huh. He was a little Scottish Terrier. Yep. I just come home from school one day, and he was Scottish. gone. He was gone. He so ran away. Did they tell you he ran away? No, no, they, they weren't liars. They just didn't tell me go, that he was going to be leaving, and you come home and your freaking best friend's gone. Yep. So, and then when we get further into me getting older and starting to party, I had this dog called Rage. I went to buy some drugs in the hood, and there was Ozzy this, there, and Rage. Um, there was these people coming into this dope house I was in and they were trying to buy drugs and they had this cute little fluffy puffy they wanted a hundred bucks for and I happened to have a hundred dollars so I said I'll take it and I bought this dog and I took him with me everywhere and he was my best friend and he was just so smart and I had, I might have been a little unhealthily attached to this dog okay. I lived uh one trauma one, bonding one day I come home and my mom's in tears and I, I I took me a minute to get her to tell me why what's wrong what's wrong what's wrong and she says well uh because every now and then, I wasn't living at home, but I would t come home and tie him up. He had a doghouse there, and I tied him up outside, and he dug a hole, and Dad had come in flipping out, and he told my mother, either that dog goes or I'm leaving. And, of course, 
it was probably a bluff. My dad never left my mom, but my mom took it seriously, and she was caught in this dilemma, as she usually was, between me and my dad because she knew that I wasn't going to get rid of my dog. So what I did, this was my little rebellion as, as a smart kid at 15 years old, and I wasn't living at my parents, but I would still go there and sleep. I packed up my little marble sleeping bag and my clothes, and I went to Little Perrysville, one stop sign, one gas station town, and I moved underneath the bridge in town. <laughs> True okay. story. I spent a whole summer living underneath the bridge and coming up town with me and my dog and no shirt and just my knife on my side, and the whole town was talking. <laughs> and it was just, you know, my dad would probably tell you today if you talked to him, it ate his lunch because everybody's coming to, why is your son living underneath the bridge? Just me and my dog. <laughs> um, he will and, not do that with your animals today, folks, but uh, keep yeah, yeah, here's yeah. the whole thing. And then Brittany, I had when we was in our early 20s, was, yeah. was a pit bull. Oh, Same thing ass. was attached to her. But the, the, the long story of my life, there was also some pit bulls I bought when I lived in California. Mm -hmm. But there was too Hold much. Hold on. You realize that we named our dogs after Ozzy Osbourne, Rage Against the Machine, and Britney Spears. Yes. <laughs> yes. It shows you I was evolving as a man. Culturally appropriated. Of that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. I had. And then when. I went out to California and I got all spun out. I bought me and my friend a couple $800 red nose pits and one of them got parvo and I went through that tweaking out and that was a horrible experience and then when we decided we were coming home, we couldn't figure out how to get home with the dog and the cheap car we bought. Long story short, through my early 20s, I, I had a couple attempts of having dogs and my instability ended in me having to get rid of them. So somewhere before 25, I did what a lot of people, and I didn't even know this up until recently, I did what a lot of people do with trauma, and I stuffed it down, yep. and I pretty much forgot that I even loved dogs. Then when I got with my wife, she had what I thought, just like many people thought, was the biggest damn pit bull i ever seen uh, in my life. Well, that, it, it absolutely was. Yeah, well, he's not a pit bull. He, he was a bully. That, that's what introduced me. He was a mutt, but I thought I was like, this is the biggest pit. He's got a freaking 25 that's inch huge. head, huge. 110 pounds, and just the most loving thing you'd ever see. Like her kids would ride his Slobber back, pull on it. its ears, and he was just nothing but love. And I was yeah. like, when I started researching what breed he was, I fell in love. And, and it still didn't happen because I didn't raise him. He was like four years old. Uh, I think her and her ex-husband bought him together. I liked him. I loved the temperament. And I was saying, when we, get, when we buy a house, I want to breed these dogs. And then last year, around this time on my birthday, we bought the house, had some money left over, and I went and got my first bully puppy. Something freaking happened. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the other side of this story. Me and Marty been working in treatment and self-care and helping others for almost six years. Mm -hmm. And we used to, well, he still kind of is, but I used to be a gym enthusiast. And when people talk about hobbies, I would tell them that working out was my hobby. Well, now in hindsight, I can tell you that going to the gym was never a hobby for me. Mm -hmm. I would have 45 minutes. Maybe he really, really just wanted to look good. Naked. I wanted to look good and I wanted to feel good. And I liked working out. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. But you had 45 minutes. You had to hit two muscle groups. You go in there. You hit every freaking minute of it. You got to get it done. And then you go out. <laughs> it was not relaxing to me at all. Okay. It was I was going in there with a mission and a purpose. Yep. And of course, I come out feeling better. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like some people feel about golf. Or hunting. Yep. Or just... Or how you, Brian Borden, feel about the gym. Absolutely. I haven't been in like three months. We don't, Absolutely. We don't it just wasn't... I, and I realized after doing this 24-7, being on your phone and the emails and people calling and working in treatment and running groups and doing shows, that for six years, five years really, I didn't have a hobby. Mm -hmm. And I was still, and still maybe kind of in, but not nowhere near like I was, burning out... Lack of empathy, lack of compassion, total cynical. Just he I tell still people, kind of has a lot of that. In I the, I do, but you. when I got Jax, when we went to Tennessee and I got that puppy, yep. it woke up something inside of me that's been dead for a very long time, and mm -hmm. I can't tell you anything else on the planet that does that for me. Yep. And of course, I did what typical uh, what we do. It's now become an obsession. <laughs> But I got the dog. How has your disease manifested itself yep. in your life today? Absolutely. But I got this dog. Is your wife aware of this? Yes. Oh, yeah. I told her all of it. 
I got this it's dog. It's very evident. Nothing else makes me happier than this puppy. I didn't oh, say yeah. it makes me happier. Oh, yeah. I said does this for me. This is okay. this is different. Okay. The kids are this responsible. Is exactly how right. he spl- explained yep, it yep, to her. I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just it's different. It's something that's childlike, which I do not re- relate marriage and parenting and everything else we do to being childlike. Yeah. Uh, the puppy thing. It's just and and then I start I remembered that my dogs were trained and I started working with that this dog and he's he was smart and I, I got into a rhythm and then I just well how far can I take it? And I started TikToking and YouTube because that's how I learn everything. Yep. And I started <laughs> I got really good and it, then this is what we do. I started documenting the journey and it started getting traction and momentum. Well, right at this time my wife took a fall off her ladder and broke her arm so she she's traumatized she wasn't loving it before that happened and she decides she's getting out of remodeling houses she wants to do something different and she's in at, at this period she's looking into real estate and she's looking into some different things and working from home well as this momentum goes we find this college this dog trainer college and she starts looking into it and she starts getting into it i send her to college she becomes a professional trainer and kind of equally has the same interest. Okay. So now not as a, something that makes me feel childlike and it's my obsession, but it's something that we can bond with and have it's, in it's, common. It's been a whole, now it's, it's a family bonding. Yes, it's it a, is. it's a family company. It is. You but got Allie it, on it, just killing it. And it's, it's awesome to watch, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and, and she has that childlike obsession, if you will, with yeah. the dogs too, which yeah. is perfect. Which is something that I can teach my children, which I'm not good at very many things. <laughs> so <laughs> that's cool. That's cool well, too. To get, to get back relate, to manifesting, <laughs> right? <laughs> Brian, Brian one can't relate. Brian two over here. Uh, but to get back to manifesting though, like that is a very, to visualize and manifest is probably one of the most profound things that's overlooked in anything that we do in life. Well, here, I want to touch on and, and the, obses- the obsession it takes, you know? I'm going to debate that a little bit with you, okay. and here's why. You even said, I don't even know where it came from, right? Like, you you mentioned not knowing, right? So yeah. we talk about the unknown, the world of the unknown, and I believe that the world of the unknown and the limitless possibilities of life don't take a lot of work. It takes a lot of drive. Like, you have to believe it in or your like head. Or, like I so said, true. obsessed. Yeah, like, so it has to be so true in your head that there is no other option, right? Yep. So no we, plan B. As Marty put me on... Last year, a minute ago, I started sweating like, let's just beep this and I'll just act like I'm saying something. It's been a pleasure to watch you sweat, though. So, <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. That's so weird. Um, we're talking about this space where I believe that people do life backwards. We okay. spend all of our life trying to predict everything. Mm. How you're going to wake up, what's going to happen at work. Before you get out of bed, you're already worried about and trying to predict, am I going to get everything done today? Am I going to hit traffic? Which turn will I make? Am I going to hit a red light? Is this car going to cut me off? Is that a-hole going to say something crappy? We are constantly in prediction model because that's the way we wired ourselves because of past bad experiences. Well, that's worry, what you're you're describing. Yeah, but it's still, we're predicting from what we know. So we predict from the known. That's what worry is, though, right? Right? So we predict, worry comes from experiences. And when you attach an experience to an actual emotion and you do it long enough, it actually becomes a memory. I was pretty terrified that you guys was going to put me in an uncomfortable chair in the corner where I couldn't move around. (laughs) You you manifested that, bro. He's right, though. You manifested That's what I mean. So where you place your focus is where you place your energy. So I believe in a world where anything is possible within scientific realm, right? Like, you can't just magically turn the sky green unless you're CNN and you go on there and say it. Or and you take some LSD. The sky becomes green. But, or... So you can't fly, you can't do other things, but what you want in your life is buried deep inside of everyone somewhere. Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. How to unlock it is a very tricky situation, and I understand that part, and that comes from a lot of curiosity and a lot of questions, but not questions from other people. It's questions you got to ask yourself. Because I'm sure when that happened, you got real curious, like, what is this? This feeling, right? That you're like, I don't even know where it came from, but you're like, I, I like it. This feels real. This feels normal. Yeah. And I can attach that to something, right? And now you're creating a new memory. And now that, now you've been able to go back into your childhood and be like, dang, now, now it's starting to make more sense. I had forgotten about all of this. And then yep. I unlock something because you would never stop manifesting, in my opinion, because it's always been 
deep inside of you, but because we're wired like a computer, we just keep storing it in the next file, and then we keep storing it in the next file, and then we put the new software on top of it, and then we have the updates and the updates and the updates, well, and before and, you know it, you can't find the file anymore. And like you said, with the obsession and the drive, you get so locked. Like, we, we've, we've been doing some pretty big stuff, and you're so locked and driven and focused on that that there, there really isn't no... I, did, I I won't say isn't none. I will say I did not allow myself no time for exploration mm-hmm. or other options. It's kind of like that. We went into this treatment center thing and what we're going to do and making it bigger. There was no plan B. There was no options. It was just everything until right. it gets to a point where you've driven yourself into an early grave and you've got to find some. You forget about self-care. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But I believe that. That, that comes with the balance of life, right? Like, there's a difference between manifesting something and a dangerous obsession about something. Dangerous That's what I heard obsession. when I heard the word obsession at gotcha. first was people take that in a dangerous form very quickly. Um, I, I think all obsessions is dangerous. It's capable of being dangerous. It, 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 because, but when you one, do it the way I do it. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> but I, but I, think, I think it also is exactly what it takes. And But I think the... The difference is, is knowing when that obsession becomes too dangerous and knowing when to step back a minute and say, okay, and because I can, where, I can live in a dangerous world yeah. for a very long period of time, very dangerous, very on edge, very, very walking the line. And as long as I know that there's an ending in sight, I can see the ending. I can be very dangerous all the way up to that point, but I have to see that ending. Right. Otherwise I'm going to implode. Right. It's just, you know, it's just like people in college. Right. They can they can they're studying, they're working, they're working a job. They, they study, they go to class, they have to do these essays, they have to do these book, whatever they do in college. I never made college in case you didn't notice, but they can do that because they see an ending. In case you right? didn't notice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't believe in college. So anyway, <laughs> neither do I. So we're good. <laughs> but um, the, you know, manifesting and well, I used to call it scripting. Right, I, I have to. I I used to lay in bed, and this is a form of obsession. I used to lay in bed and literally script my next day to a T, like everything that I was going to do, how I was going to do it, the time it was going to take, and in what degree and where my mind was going to be focused. I used to do this every night, and then the next day I would follow that, and I would follow that suit, and 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 what it did, first off, is it becomes more real. Everything that seems impossible, like you just said, becomes possible when you script it out and you see every scenario and how it could go wrong and how it could go is good. Possible. It, it truly That's is. That's the reality it of it. It truly and is. Your brain doesn't know the difference between imagination we, and reality. Us, us three. This is factual science. Us three are doing the impossible scans. in our lives. Yeah. We were we were deemed and and should very well be dead long time ago. Not only dead, but maybe living in the streets, maybe home, maybe I should be in you know prisons, jails, death, all that. This will everything we do that we're doing. They said was impossible for us to do. Oh, a thousand percent. And that's, we're doing it, and we're doing it twice. That's the realm in which I live in. Right, and uh, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's the, the realm that I'm living in now. And like I was talking to my wife last night, and sometimes I'm like, "Do you think I'm crazy?" Yeah. Like, because I know that most people don't get this. That's why 99% of the people out there are miserable and struggling with depression and dealing with anxiety issues and dealing with all these things as if their life is harder than mine. Right. Bro, we could sit down and compare notes all day long. It's not harder. It's the perspective of the way I put it. At one moment in my life, I believe the same way that that person did. However, I've started to realize that the reality of life is that in the unknown, anything is possible. Well, you said perspective, right? It, 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 and, and perspective, as we three know, perspective on, on anything mm-hmm. is everything. How we choose to look at something. You can look at it. We were talking about the comments earlier. You can look at that comment like a bad comment, or you right. can just overlook it. Right. You can overlook it, or you can look at it as a great thing because like, this damn, person's I'm going com- viral right, right. now. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Everything that... In our lives, that it's hit, hit us in our lives is a, is a matter on perspective. And that's something I didn't understand. I didn't know I had a choice to to perceive this in a negative way or to perceive it in a, in a positive way. I didn't know that. I'm just like, this is negative, 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 hate, 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 anger, pain, pain, pain. Yeah. Right? A but challenge. You, we, we had a we had a, a couple of podcasts ago. You talking about how addicts are, are, are a step above, basically. Absolutely. We, we as addicts and alcoholics have something inept in us. That's why I did it. Guaranteed. <laughs> no, it's honestly though, I guarantee. It's stupid. I, that was honestly, so stupid. It's a we, misdirected drive based on something that's wired inside of us, and I, I we're thoroughly obsessed. believe that we have an obsession that can be very dangerous. When you give me some heroin, right? 
or it can be very good you when you it. when you make when when you help me understand and I believe that I obviously did this for myself with God of course like I never will discount my higher power however they've done studies where it is shown that there's somebody that is a pianist and they play the piano and they they register their brain then they tell them to stop and imagine playing the piano and the same exact signal comes across the scan they're yeah. not even moving they're just thinking about it and yeah. it literally fires the exact same and that's when they realized that the difference between imagination and reality doesn't exist in the human brain. It does not know. It cannot comprehend that. And that's the key to it. So when yeah, you focus on something, that's your reticular activating system. That's what tells your brain to focus. Big this words. is important, right? A challenge. I run a group because I think this is real important for people in early recovery. Uh, I say, I understand that you probably have no idea what, what it is you're supposed to be doing, what your purpose is and stuff. I said, but I challenge you to try and come up with what, just imagine mm -hmm. what you would look like at your greatest version. Yep. Imagine I, what you'd look like if anything was possible. Yep. And I said, I would, I'll challenge you to spend more time in imagination than you do in memory. Yep. Because the only purpose that memory serves is in lessons learned. You're tied to your past. You're repeating the same mistakes because you're literally chained to your past trauma and all this stuff. And I'm like, I know that you can't just, you don't have Click a key to that chain. Right. That's what this whole process with the, with the therapy and the step work and, and the community and all that connection, it's supposed to unchain you from that. Mm -hmm. But I just want you to do something that you can do right where you're at or before you go to bed at night and just imagine you know, if you could do anything you I wanted see. to do. The I, funny thing is that this is backed by science, and that I'm just I'm I'm like sitting here hyper focused on you because you're saying things that I right. dive into like a different world with because that's exactly how it works in reality. You imagine something, right? Like the way that a memory is created is you attach an emotion to it. That emotion sticks around long enough, it becomes a memory, yep. and that memory becomes he stuck listens with to your a life. Lot of Tony Robbins. When your memory <laughs> is stuck in your life long enough, it becomes a characteristic. Yeah, yeah. And now you have a personality trait all based on something that you couldn't replace. So when you imagine something, so if you had something that happened in your life and you take a snapshot of it in your brain, like you got hit by a car and boom, and now you're afraid for six months, that's a picture. It's fully developed now. You can't change that picture. You can replace it you ever with read your imagination. Have you ever read any Bob Proctor? No. Think Rich. Yeah. Law of Attraction, that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. A thousand percent. Yeah. You can't imagine your reality and create it from the unknown because everything in life is unknown, period. If you really think about it, I don't know whether or not that person's going to go into my lane. I don't know if I'm going to hit the red light. And I can't sit here and think green, 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 and it's actually going to work. That's not the point. Now you're doing it way wrong. It, it actually will work <laughs> if you wait long enough. <laughs> well, you don't know until you close your eyes and gun it. But the thing about oh. it, like, I, I have had so many examples in my life where I have been obsessed. And I, what I mean by obsessed is obsessed in thought mm -hmm. about a certain situation or a certain career advancement or certain this or certain that and 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 i think it could go either way because you could be obsessed about negative things and all you're going to do is like attracts like right so all you're going to do is bring you're going to you're going you're to put that out there those thoughts are going to going to create behaviors and those behaviors are going to create actions and those actions are going to create stuff that the same bears them the very same thing to come back to you but i have many examples in my life where i've scripted every night about things that i wanted to do and this is just like the power of prayer if you ask me yeah. the power of prayer is 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 just like putting something because you're not praying for negative crap you're not gonna sit there and think and obsess and prayer speak for yourself you may. you're talking about think and grow rich <laughs> and the power of the subconscious mind and i did, wasn't paying attention to the it just author. clicked on it, it just clicked just like because <laughs> He gets but, biblical oh no. with it, and that you just said something. I'll come back in a minute. Yeah, it's just, but if you, if you're the power of prayer is is the power of of scripting something out, right? You're mm -hmm. you're constantly thinking. About, if you're praying about something hard, maybe something's happening in your life, and you're just constantly praying. You are putting yourself in that that scenario in your head that you're going to make that come to fruition. Right. You're going to make these things come because your thought is on this constantly. Mm -hmm. So you're going to subconsciously make steps towards that. And before you know it, you're going to, you're going to reach that. So 
many examples in my life where I've had this happen to me with unwittingly, right? I didn't know what I was doing. But there was a, a time when I was in a factory and I was working as a temporary, sir. You know, I was working through a temporary service at a factory and making very, 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 very much minimum wage, right? But I every day and every night, I only thing I dreamed about in this factory because that's this is what was going on in my world mm -hmm. was to become a maintenance mechanic and 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 thinking about you know I could sit there and think I want to become a maintenance mechanic. But when I'm constantly obsessed with that thought, when the maintenance people would come over to the machine I was working on, my I subconsciously started watching them fix it. I was obsessed and, and, and fascinated by what they were doing. And next thing you know, I'm learning these things by watching. And the next thing you know, I'm fixing the machines before they even get there. And the next thing you know, there's a job opportunity that gets posted that, hey, we're looking for a maintenance mechanic. My supervisor comes over to say, hey, just so you know, because he's watched me do this for several months. He's watched me save the company time and money because the machines weren't broke down because I fixed them before maintenance got there. And next thing you know, I am working as a maintenance mechanic in this factory. So what right. you're saying is through visualization, you killed the other maintenance guy. Whatever. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he drank himself out of that job, uh, you know, which well, is perfect. In these books, they, they go biblical. And if you if you don't believe in this because of the way you see the Bible, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. But I believe it because when they talk about scripturally, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Yeah. Knock and the door will be opened. Yeah. That's manifesting yeah. uh, on agree. a biblical format. I agree. I agree. That yeah. is God speaking Reap to you, what you telling sow. you exactly what it is. And I believe in that wholeheartedly. And then Same. to get back to your topic, Same. like I, I find it funny, and I, this is I implore people if you're listening right now. Poor I people. believed. <laughs> Did you say poor I people? Said implore. <laughs> I, so poor people. <laughs> poor people. I don't want to talk to you about That's money. That's the only people listening. Oh no! Because <laughs> clearly you don't have a job because you're watching yeah. this for an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we if love you. You have a feeling in your deep in your soul since I was little. Once I got into relationships, seeing my parents struggle, I just felt like that. There, that's not that's that should not be the way it is. That doesn't make sense to me. If you love someone, it shouldn't be that hard. And I have had that, and I have broken up with many of people, women, because thank you for specifying. Not, <laughs> thank you for specifying. You got to realize <laughs> what that was that was, that, you that, was, that was the last off. show yeah. that made you specify. So, <laughs> <laughs> I had it deep in my mind that that person exists where it is not this hard. And I broke up with people because it would get difficult and, and be like, this is, this is too much for me. I should not have to fight with you about whether or not my underwear is sitting next to the hamper. And I didn't make it all the way in. This is stupid. Oh, me. come on. Is like, that, do you guys not fight about that? No. Now? Oh my God. Jess. I thoroughly they believed don't in fight my head, right? <laughs> I had a moment in my life where my mom, before I moved out here, she gave me my old wedding ring because I was so mad at my ex. I turned it into like this blinged out pinky ring. And so she was like, I want you to have this. And I was like, no, you know, in my head, I believed that I was past that. Like I had hit that moment in my life. Like you had just kind of forgotten about that thought. When I met my wife, it hit. Wow. She does exist. This is easy. Like I'm not even trying right now. I gave her a bunch of crap that she should have ran out the door and not it brought us closer. And I feel like I can just be myself. And when we fight about something, there's a purpose behind it. Yeah. Like we have a legitimate problem that we're dealing with. It's a financial situation that mm. we're trying to adjust and figure out and we can get off track and it turns into what we would call a debate. You know, sure, the arguments happen, but it doesn't get to the point where it's just like, what are we fighting about? Then gets to the point of degrading it's easy. and yelling or name It legitimately calling. is easy because I believe in my head that's how a relationship should be. And because I believe it so firmly inside of my core since I was little, that's what I got. Yeah. And I wasn't going to stop until I got there. Yeah. Well, a lot of people say if that desire that you have is God's proof to you that it's already yours. Exactly. The go getting it is obviously. A is, long journey, right? Yeah, and it yeah. came with a lot of I felt like I had failed. But failure is only when you set a time frame on something and it doesn't happen in that time frame. It doesn't mean you failed. Mm -hmm. It means you chose to quit. Yeah. And there's a big difference. Failure only happens if you never did it and then you die. Yep. And you can go even deeper. Like we, without getting religious, but we are creators. And the world kind of stomps that, that belief out of people. Mm -hmm. God, like everybody's got, everybody's sure. got, everybody had some kind of dream at some point in their life. Nobody as a little kid or, or teenagers had somebody speak life into them. Most people don't even have people speak life into them, but they should have. You could do anything you want. What is it you would like to do? They probably would have had an answer. 
And then somewhere along the line, it got kicked the shit out because they've had th- their whole life. It's been, you can't do this. And you can't do that. Mm-hmm. And you won't do this. And you should do that. Mm-hmm. And they give up on themselves. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, that little natural burning desire and you having the belief in yourself to go get it. Those are the, that's the missing link. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people have that thought. No, I'll never do that. I couldn't do that. The one I, thing that's why I talk about it all the time. Like, make sure you surround yourself with the right people. You yeah, know, and, you know, because you need people to, to even even if you're forty, I don't give. A and we're talking about two different things, but they coincide perfectly. No, like we're talking do. about Absolutely. we're talking about the visualization yeah, and yeah. the seeing it, how now that attracts it yep. to you. Yep. And we're also talking about like let's just say that the door opens, but you lack the damn confidence to walk through it, right? Or you take the lesser than option that right. presents itself along the, the way. Easier road now. Yeah. Whether, and, and it's like James Sweezy talks about all the time, because I will talk to people that, that have given me the opportunity and coached me and, and hired me. I will say, thanks. I have no idea where me and Marty would be in our lives without you. And James always hits me with that. You'd be right where you're at. Yeah. It's, it's what you was meant to do. It, it would have been a different way that you got there, but you know, there's, yeah. there's a lot of hidden truths that are all true at the same time and still contradictions. <laughs> does that make sense absolutely it does. Yeah. It does. on a simple format though for for people that are wanting to know more about because you brought up a, a very good coaching technique that we use and it's actually what we call one of the magical questions if i could snap my fingers what would and you, you were to go to bed tonight and when you woke up in the morning everything that you thought about was real how would you feel first you attach it to an emotion you want to get them emotionally involved in this for a minute you want to help them with that feeling because as soon as you attach an emotion to it it starts to actually bond right once they're in that feeling, you then reverse engineer it. Okay, what do you think has changed in order for you to get there? And then what could you do to make those changes? And you yeah. just keep walking back slowly. It's the same way you do business. How do you make a million dollars? Sell a thousand things for a thousand dollars, right? You just reverse engineer where you're trying to get, and that's how you get there. Yeah. In this, in a very, I make it sound simple because to me it is now. No, and it is, and it's beautiful. But it really but is. It stumps the hell out of the majority Absolutely. of the population. Absolutely. Like, there's a lot of people that have brilliant ideas, and they've shared them with me about these wonderful restaurants or these wonderful this or this wonderful that. But what they lack is that little micro step. Like, they got, you know, what's the next step? Yep. You know, what you don't focus on, on, on the whole staircase. It's one step at a time. Right. You can have a great idea, but there's, there's a heck of a lot. You know, you've got to focus on that first step. Yep. And then that second step. How do you walk up a flight of stairs when you can't see the top? How you do just you just keep walking, right? How yeah. do you but most people go, I just don't, right? Because I don't know when it's going to end. I don't know how long I'm going to have to do this. Well, that's yeah. the whole entire point. I'm scared to death. There's I might so die before I reach the top. that have made it to this money platform and they're like, now what? Because yeah. that's not what they actually wanted. It's the journey that you got to be involved in. We talk about that on the podcast a lot. And getting these people involved in this reality of anything is possible. I'm living proof. If you want actual factual data, there are three people in this room that should have been dead, that cool. have been to prison, and should be there permanently. Yeah. You just counted have, Chris in. That have I literally. Did. Did. Oh, or what are you talking about? Let's, Je- let's just, just break down society. I got my face tattooed, drug addict, multiple divorces, been to prison, having all these problems. I should not be successful by society's point. But and if my, I got anything to but, do about it, you but won't driven be. deep inside of me is a, I'll show you. But it's not about you. It's I know what I can do, and I'm going to show myself, and you can just watch for all I care. And that's the thing we talked about too. Uh, that that that, well, inept, actually, that that ineptability. Actually, we hope they'll watch. Yeah, that ineptability <laughs> that us that us addicts and 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 alcoholics have is once you instill a belief system in in us because mm-hmm. we just went through however many years without a, any kind of a belief system we didn't believe in anything we believed i need to get high i need and to i did yeah, yeah and that and, and we did it very well a lot and of to, people tried to stop well, me. i stopped believing in that because i stopped getting high i just felt normal <laughs> i just feel I normal. Felt high when i was but sober. still uh, that was the weird part you but got what it about, took to feel normal though yeah the belief system is is the most powerful thing that you can have in your life and it and that's why all of this coincides one you're going to start believing if you can start visualizing it. you can start scripting it and you can start playing it over and over in your head two you're going to start believing and if your circle is not a cage right your circle is people that that believes in you mm-hmm. too and pushing you and prodding you and and holding you accountable to the things that you say and that you want and all these different things so it's all these different things if you can give an addict or an alcoholic a dip a different belief system than what we've always had you're we're watch out right watch out because things are getting ready to change for not only me but everybody in my in my circle 
right? That's another paradigm, too, though, because I guarantee you, you guys can relate to this. When you do have a vision and you do believe it's going to happen, you watch them the unbelievers drop off like <laughs> they, they can't keep only up. Is pe- the only other people that you will be able to carry yeah. a conversation with yeah. and only people that are like minded are other dreamers and visionaries and right. driven people that are driving and it's yeah. not like you i mean sometimes you do it's not like you go in and purposely clean house nope screw you i'm done with you nope you're not doing nothing nope you're a loser they, they walk away no yeah, yeah. Includes, like attracts family, like family right yeah. that includes but, anybody oh, anyway. yeah. That's not especially you. family yes. negative negative parasitic people don't want to be around positive people yep. it, it makes them feel oh, bad you're you know? stupid that ain't ever gonna happen yep. yeah. you're this you're that you're this so to leave somebody that's out there listening to start with the basics right like i just want you to spend time and i want you to close your eyes and i want you to imagine something imagine it to the point where it becomes so real that you can actually attach a feeling to you can it. taste it because you, you can, can feel start it. to feel it like you'll feel your blood pressure rise you'll feel your heart beating faster you'll feel the excitement build up you will feel it at first it might feel very uncomfortable and, that and that's fe- when i implore you to hold on tighter and that that feeling that means it's working that feeling that you're having is is your you're starting to believe it yeah you're starting to believe these things are possible that's your subconscious going hold on hold on hold on we can and do you this you have to reprogram your subconscious to be like no dude you're you're mine catch you up you belong yeah. to me not catch the other up. way around and that's why i think i think vision boards are important too yes. because if you have not your imagination is like a muscle and mm-hmm. if you have not used it in mm-hmm. a very long time sometimes you need some help so a lot of stuff you know even if it's something stupid like a dream home or Whatever it is, you could find stuff that looks similar to what you want, and you could put it in front of your eyes. That's why they say make goals. They say that you're 70% more likely to accomplish your goals if you write them down Mm -hmm. because you could see it. It becomes obtainable. It becomes real when you put it on paper. It also requires more memory for your brain to physically write versus saying it out loud because you actually have to tell your hand what to do, and you attach more of an emotion to it. So there is actually science behind writing it. Because you're forcing your brain to think harder about it because you have to think about writing it. Love it. Love it. You and your science. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank I've been you in for this rabbit hole for a while. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Yes. Uh, thank you, Brian, for being yes, here, man. You, we Brian, love you. Much. Like, uh, subscribe, and hit that bell. I think he said bell. Haters There's welcome. a bell. Guys, Haters welcome. That's, a- that's when you go back and put a bell on the. <laughs> Perfect. That's the one. That's the one, guys. Thank you very much. Have love a good you. day. We love you. Gosh. Gosh.